Hi, there's been so much happening recently that I've had to split this roundup of new maker products into two videos. This video has all the cool crowdfunding stuff. Oh, and seriously, go and hide your wallet. Really. Kickstarter is starting to see a whole bunch of dodgy free energy campaigns these days. But here's a couple that don't violate the laws of physics. Back in weekly roundup number 23, we saw the Me Arm Pi, which is a 3D printed Pi driven robotic arm. The Pi arm is a step up from that, giving you a full six axis robotic arm. It is fairly expensive, but the creator has chosen to go down the pressed metal path rather than using 3D printed parts. There's no details on accuracy, but looking at the specs of the servo, it's geared for a 0.24 degree accuracy. So don't expect pick and place style accuracy on this thing. Of course, since it's driven from a Pi, you can connect cameras and sensors to the arm. This next one is from a fellow Aussie maker who I met at the last Adelaide Maker Fair. He built a KVM switch specifically for his Mappy Dot, which you can also pick up from his Tindy store but he figured it can also be used for other things such as branching out programming cables to multiple devices, multi-MCU communications, joining ITC, SPI or USB buses together. The Port Muxer is a bi-directional 8 or 16 channel switched bus mux capable of handling either analog or digital signals, so is logic level neutral. So you can multiplex any esoteric bus you want. There's adapter boards for JTAG and ICSP if you have a need for gang programming. He's also written a pretty schmick GUI interface for control. Nice. We've seen a ton of tiny MCU boards on the market in the past. The U-chip is no exception, but this one aims to be a drop-in replacement for a standard through-hole component. It runs the ubiquitous SAM D21 and pushes out 14 GPIOs with, most importantly, VCC and ground in the standard positions of pin 16 and pin 8. There's an onboard 5 volt regulator so it can handle any PCB DC supply. Of course the SAMD21 isn't 5 volt logic level tolerant for inputs. However, the dip style means that you can actually use it as a drop in replacement for any number of through hole ICs. There's also a bunch of examples on the campaign page using OLED and VGA displays. Here's another breakout board designed to make breadboarding easier for the Raspberry Pi. The idea is to move all the breakout pins from the middle to the side, freeing up as many holes on the breadboard and connecting up power and ground rails. The Pi header is also pushed out to allow for hats to be placed on top. Nice. If you're into retro gaming, then the Pixar is a pretty complete DIY gaming console. It has the typical lineup of features such as 128 by 160 OLED display, eight buttons, buzzer, LiPo charging, micro SD slot, and all built around the universal 8 mega 328p. So it can be reprogrammed using the Arduino IDE. The 600 milliamp hour battery can supply enough juice for four hours of continuous button mashing joy. This is a pretty simple campaign for an RLC box. This is one of those things that is a requirement for every electronics toolbox. This one, however, not only allows you to dial in resistive values from 1 ohm to 100 mega ohm, capacitor values from 10 picofarads to 68 nanofarads, and inductor values from 10 nanohenries to 150 millihenries, but also allows you to organize them all in arrangements of RC, LC, RL, RLC, or fully isolated. Nice. Back in weekly roundup number 50, we saw the GRISP board on Tindy. This is a campaign for the next revision of that board and provides several enhancements. It now uses bare metal Erlang with RTEMS Artos, supports Elixir, which is a dynamic language for scalable applications built on top of Erlang, an added ethernet port, modular design, and more responsive booting and IO. It also now runs the NXP IMX 6UL, which is a Cortex A7 SOC running at 696 MHz, along with 4 gig eMMC, so a fairly major step up from the previous revision. If you're an audiophile, then this one looks pretty interesting. It's a little expensive, but for 195 euros, you get an eight channel DSP built on the analog devices ADA U1452. It also has an XMOS multi-channel bi-directional audio streaming IC, ESP32 Wi-Fi for control, USB for both control and 16 channel audio streaming to your PC without drivers. 
Also a 32-bit DAC and ADC supporting up to 192 kHz, as well as a secondary ADC and DAC supporting THD. Eight balanced analog inputs and outputs, as well as SPDIF in and out. A fairly complete board for audio heads. Meanwhile, over at Crowd Supply, there's a couple of interesting things in pre-launch. The Scope Fun aims to combine five common benchtop tools into one fully hackable unit. Built around the Arctic 7 FPGA, along with 512MB DDR3 RAM and Cypress FX3 USB 3.0 driver, it gives you an oscilloscope with 200 mega samples per second on two channels, or 500 mega samples on one channel, with 10 bit resolution and 128 mega sample storage to RAM per channel. Two channel waveform generator at up to 200 megahertz and 12 bit resolution. Two channel spectrum analyzer up to 125 megahertz. And 12 channel logic analyzer at up to 250 mega samples per second. There's also software support for Windows, Linux, and OS X with full GUI and access to a Python library for hacking. Microchip are starting to launch several competitions this year. One of them is in conjunction with Mouser Electronics and CrowdSupply. If you have a cool project that showcases a microchip component and you launch it on CrowdSupply anytime within 2019, you can also enter this competition. Nice. Another one in pre-launch is the RoboHat MM1. This is an open source board designed specifically for robotics and so has all the essentials like 9 off IMU, INA219 current sensor, SAMD21 extending the number of Raspberry Pi GPOs, 8 24-bit servo control headers, 4 16-bit RC control inputs, NeoPixel output, drone code compliant connectors, LiPo charging with 5 volt regulator able to power the Pi, and it also supports Scratch, PX4, RG Pilot, CircuitPython, Seesaw, and of course the Arduino IDE. The Prism is a bit of a bold project, mainly because I've had enough of electrocuting myself with mains power. This is a fully hackable charging station for electric vehicles. It supports single and three phase power input with an all important RCD capable of tripping at 30 milliamps which isn't the standard medical 10 milliamps, but good enough for residential use. It's driven by an ATM90 E36 SOC running Linux and an STM32, which are capable of performing FFT analysis on voltage and current. So is a pretty complete package that's also hackable. Oh, and it also has an LED strip output if you really want to pimp your ride. Developing for hardware is great, but you always need to have whatever you're developing on physically present. Not anymore with the RED. This box aims to provide everything required to remotely control and develop on embedded devices. It gives you two USB 2 and two USB OTG ports, six relays, switchable SD card and SPI flash, GPIO controlled FPGA along with SPI, ITC and UARTs. There's been a few biomedical maker products in the past like the Healthy Pi back in weekly roundup number 36. However, this one is unusual in that it gives you bioimpedance tomography, which essentially means that you can scan anything placed within the phantom, which is a biomedical term for that little circular bit in the middle. Not only can you scan the fruit of your choice, but also measure blood flow changes and even determine the presence of hemoglobin in blood samples. You can fetch data over Bluetooth at 160 kilosamples per second with 16-bit resolution. And it also contains an accelerometer. So theoretically, you could do a full 3D scan of an object. And over at GroupGets, you can pick up a temperature compensated pH sensor. Access is over plain old I2C, accepting either 3.3 or 5 volt logic levels. If you're accessing over an MCU, then there's a bunch of libraries for the Arduino and Particle IO IDEs, as well as MicroPython. There's also Python and Rust libraries for the Raspberry Pi. Of course, you'll still need a pH probe. The I2S Mezzanine is a 96 board compliant audio board, which provides three stereo inputs, one mic input, and three stereo outputs, including a headset amp. These are all routed through two DSP chips on an I2S bus, allowing the board to be configured as two stereo outputs or inputs. There's also an I2C bus for control. Last year in some weekly roundup we saw the bacon bits from Michael Welling. This is a cape for the pocket beagle that provides a USB host port, 
a micro USB port with FTX 230X USB to UART bridge, an MCP 23S18 7 segment display, single RGB LED, accelerometer, thumb wheel, and user buttons. There's also a bunch of embedded Apprentice Linux engineer courses available based on this board, which are starting to be pretty popular. The NVT2008 is a bi-directional logic level converter from NXP. This can translate a 1 to 3.6 volt signal on the low side to a 1.8 to 5 volt signal on the high side. It's much better than plain old BSS138 MOSFETs as it's capable of hitting 33 MHz. So it's good to go for SPI signals. The open drain outputs also allow it to be used for I2C. Are you into retro pinball machines? This Grip Gets campaign is for a PCB that can control an electromechanical pinball score reel unit to display the current time. It has Wi-Fi access via an ESP8266, a DS3231 RTC for keeping time, and three outputs controlling chime bells. All the outputs can drive up to 30 volts, which should be enough for most pinball solenoids. Note that this is a one-off product that they'll only produce if they have enough backers. JLC PCB are the guys who provide all my PCBs and is a major sponsor of my videos. They can produce 1 to 6 layer boards with 0.4 to 2 mm thickness, track widths down to 3.5 mm and support BGAs, cutouts, fingers and even impedance matched PCBs. And they can do all this within 24 hours. They are currently offering 10 PCBs for only 2 bucks and if you are a first time customer you will get $20 off shipping off your first order. Click on the link in the description below to check them out. Over at my favourite maker store, Tindy, you can pick up a retro chiptune player based on the Yamaha YMX294. This was a classic chip used in the 80s to provide music in commas, for consoles. This PCB also has an 8 mega 328 on board to allow control using the Arduino IDE and small amplifier and speaker. I actually might get one of these for when I start mass producing my works boards. It's a Pi Hat with an onboard thermal printer, but it also has a DC jack accepting a 12 to 18 volt DC power supply, which can also power the Raspberry Pi. It has a 7 dot printing head able to print 7x5 text or 105x7 graphics per line, and is able to detect paper jams. The IR Droino Pronto Arduino Shield allows you to send any Pronto hex based IR code so you can get it to control almost any IR based device. Comes with IR Droino IR Shield, I can never say that. IR Droino, IR Droino, at Mega 328, plastic enclosure, and USB cable. The AD5689R is a dual DAC capable of 16 bit resolution giving 38 microvolts per bit which is a pretty good resolution. Powered from a 2.7 to 5.5 volt supply, it's accessible via SPI. If you want to be able to improve your GPS capability in high noise environments, then you can't go past the Ublox Neo MHU. This is a standard GPS receiver with untethered dead reckoning. It will improve your positioning capabilities without being tied to any mobile network. This unit will draw a maximum of 67 milliamps with an average of 29 milliamps and can acquire a cold start fix in 57 seconds with a hot start fix in 1.5 seconds. It also has some pretty decent accuracy that improves a lot on plain GPS positioning. If you really want to access some retro kit, then you can't go past this breakout board that interfaces to a POTS handset. POTS stands for plain old telephone service. Hang on a second. Yep. Oh, okay. Oh, hang on. Let me just get my notepad. Hang on. Those were the days. Another blast from the past is this DSP radio, which is capable of picking up any AM band from 95 kilohertz to 32.650 megahertz, and any FM band from 53.4 megahertz to 134.3 megahertz. The whole thing is tuned not by traditional analog means, but by DSP, so you can get much better tuning resolution. Has an onboard USB to UART bridge, LiPo charger, headphone jack that uses the headphone cable as an antenna, and OLED display. Control is over plain old ITC. 
if you're a fan of the Tansy, then this tiny LiPo charger, along with 170 milliamp hour battery, fits right underneath any of the 32-bit Tansy boards. Nice. This piezoelectric air blower is an upgrade on the previous one by Micro Wavemont, which drives a piezoelectric speaker at 26 kilohertz to generate a small airflow. Runs off a 5 volt DC supply at 200 milliamps during operation. Another one from Micro Wavemont. This is an upgrade on a previous board that provides a fully functional Z80 based SBC using the Toshiba TMP84C015, which contains not only the CPU, but also graphics driver and IO support in the one IC. All you need now is a composite video display, PS2 keyboard, and a 5 volt 2 amp DC supply. And you can start coding in Z80 Basic. The ESP32 coin cell is a tiny board that measures no bigger than a coin cell battery holder. Not only does it run the ESP32 PKD4, but has a small 0.69 inch OLED display, 3 DOF accelerometer, LiPo charger and USB port for both charging and UART. It doesn't have the world's best uptime as Wi-Fi is pretty expensive on battery life. And even in ultra sleep mode, the ESP32 can draw up to 0.2 milliamps which is a lot for such a tiny battery. Still, it's pretty cool. The Uthing VOC is a USB air quality sensor. It runs an STM32F072, which measures temperature, humidity, barometric pressure, and VOC gas levels, and returns an indoor air quality index. Access is over plain old USB-based UART, so no OS drivers required. And you can get it to spit out JSON or CSV at various intervals. If you're looking for an all-in-one asset tracker, then this one allows full GPS tracking over LoRaWAN. Running an STM32L082 MCU, it also has an SX1276 LoRa radio, Max MHQ GPS module, BMA400 accelerometer. It provides a pretty decent long-term battery life by only waking up from sleep when moving. Sleep mode drops down to 2.5 microamps and when operating draws around 250 microamps when updating LoRaWAN every 10 minutes and GPS every 2 hours. This means that a 2.4 amp hour battery could last up to a year. Access is over USB so you can use the Arduino IDE to update firmware. As always you can find links to everything on my website and if you want to keep up to date with the latest and greatest in the maker product scene then hit subscribe. Oh, and also that uh, bell icon that YouTube forgot about. If you do actually have anything left over in your wallet, you can also support this channel further by joining the cool bunch of patrons I have helping me keeping the lights on, either on Patreon, PayPal, and a whole lot of other methods. So that's it for part one. Check out part two for even more wallet draining goodies. Thanks for watching, and see you next week.